Hello everyone, welcome back to another Transport Fever 2 video. You're just joining me as we're about to touch down at Colne Airport. And as you can see, there's already plenty of people waiting here. This line is really picking up already. We still only have the two aircraft running on it. If I just zoom out here, you can see we've got 19 people waiting here. And these aircraft only carry three. And then down at the other end of the map, down at Burton on Trent, we have 69 people waiting. And these guys are all obviously waiting to get up to Colne just so they can jump on this mainline train route. So what we need to do is increase the amount of passengers on this line to start with today. Now, I am recording this video before I've released the one before, just because of me moving house. So unfortunately in this episode, we're not going to be starting how we usually do with the comments from you guys. So you'll have to bear with me on that, and I will address them all as and when I can do. So when the comments come through, they'll be in the next available video for you to see. But yeah, at the minute, I've just got to sort of get a few videos all planned out and recorded for you guys so that you don't have any gaps during my big move. But with that being said, let's have a look at what we can alter here. So we've got the two aircraft at the minute, and they only carry three. So if we were to change both of these vehicles, we currently have... Oh, and it looks like it's unlocked one of the mods that I have available. Don't worry, this Concorde isn't going to come in until around about the relevant time. It was one, it might, may not even do then, we'll, we'll have a look at it, but it was one that I saw on the workshop and thought that it might be cool to have flying around the map. So we currently got this cargo capacity of 3, uh, sorry, passenger capacity of 3, with 85 miles per hour, or we could go up to a Dornia Merca. The first, there was a German passenger aircraft built by the Dornia Works in the Fried, Friedrichshafen, is that right? Friedrichshafen? Please correct me if I'm wrong there, guys, and I apologise if I've murdered it. But... We do have another couple here from the Junkers mod that I downloaded. So let's have a look what we've got. We've got a capacity of 12. It seems a little bit more like it. 118 miles per hour. Or we've got 13 at 124. Well, those two look very similar. It looks like we've got the D1310. Uh, the 31 was the Lufthansa Airlines feature flight. It was the, ah, the first one to have a flight attendant. I like the idea of that. So well, let's swap them for those. And then we can say that we've got some flight attendants on board. I do need guys, we're going to end up having a fair few more aircraft, so please do drop some ideas for aircraft names down in the comments for me. But let's have a look at these D1, D1 310s. It's very chrome, isn't it? Oh, and it looks like it's got the three propellers for the main engines here, but it's also got one at the top. Now, I believe these on aircraft are for powering the onboard electronics. So they have these little propellers here that are almost like a, a little DC generator that generates all the power for the onboard lighting and things. So that's actually quite cool. And we can see the people in the windows as oh, well. I wouldn't want to be flying backwards on an aeroplane. I don't know about you guys, I don't know if any of you have ever done that. I think there is some of the smaller sort of private aircraft that do have seats backwards actually. I was just wondering if we may be able to see the air hostess, but unfortunately no, that's not going to happen. So we'll see how this cra carries on now and what the passenger numbers look like. Now we're going to be carrying 13 each time. I think it'll be fine for down here, but it's a little bit overkill for up at Colm. So if we look down, up, down at Burton here, you see we've now got 82 people waiting, which is what I want to focus on in this episode, guys. What I want to do is I want to spend this episode getting the whole the eastern side main line connected and some trains running on it. Now that is the plan. Now whether we get trains on it today all depends on finances. I mean, we don't have any loan out at the minute, and I believe we should be up to about 30 million loan now. Um, so that gives us a total of 47. But I want to concentrate on getting that done just so that everybody on each side of the map has the ability to get through, at least to the main towns. I don't think we'll be adding in the outlying towns of Howden, Gillingham and Bradford on, up on Avon, or Bradford on Avon even today, but I want to get from Dunwich through Rochdale, Shepton and Seaham down, down to the airport here. I don't think Burton's going to have its own. I think because we've got the bus and tram routes already coming from the towns, that'll suffice for the minute. And we'll just have the one in the centre at the airport here. And then we'll probably have a separate little branch line that just goes out to Biggin by the Sea, actually, as well. So what we may do is shorten this bus route to just go to Burton from the airport. And we'll, we may bring a little local service down later on. Maybe when we unlock something like the, the Pacer trains, we could have a little local one out. But I need to decide where we're going to go for this. Now we don't need a curved station, do we? But if we go in here, do we have a do we go for a German station? What's the difference between these two? Let's have a look. That one looks like it's already 
It's already raised up for some reason, that one. And then, and then this one isn't. Okay, so we'll go for the one that isn't. Platform level above track. That's fine. Platform width, 10. I don't think we need any sort of extra extra length tracks. We will go we will go for a four platform. Or do we or do we go for two here? What I'm thinking is we need one for the local trains and one for the express. So we do only actually need two. We'll we'll put high speed in ready and we are using container in the side. Platform design here. So we've got auto or we've got DGR keys. Ah, so I, I can't see what the, the difference in what that's putting in there actually, but we'll go for it. And so we can always come back and change it if it looks really, uh, it looks really, I don't know the right word really, but as if it doesn't suit the area. The only problem with this is it doesn't look very long, and I was hoping for 240. Um, we can add a lot to it, but if we have a look, platform. Oh, here we go. The platform length here. If we go up for 240. Looks like it's got a lot of options here. So we've got high speed, outer left module, this platform. Does that make sense? That looks okay for me there. Era B, we can go with offset of front entrance. We move that up. Okay, so that's putting it away from the track. Well, that's not that's not a problem. I don't mind having it on the track. Uh, we'll go for that entrance at the back side. We don't want it. So that's the second street. We don't want a second street connection. There's something stairs. We don't need stairs. Okay. Head entrance. Right, okay. And this is where we're going to go now. We don't want it on the head. So it's not the head entrance. Front entrance. Ah, here we go. So we want a large building. This is going to be quite uh, a big one of our stations. Or actually, I'm just thinking about it now. Do we want a head entrance? I think maybe, maybe we do go for a head entrance here. Because it is going to be the terminus at the bottom, at the, the end of the route, isn't it? But I want to make sure that it's not too steep of a curve coming around this airfield. If we can pull this and connect it in here, we're connected into all those train, same bus and train stops, and we just skirt past the edge of the airport there. I think that that should work really well. So we're fully connected in. Let me know what you think about that, guys. The, the building's nice and central. It's not too overkill. I don't think we need any steps or anything going over the platform because there is access to both sides here. What we may do in the future is add an extra line in at the side here just for that branch line we were talking about off to New Biggin. But I think for the minute that'll do us. And if we go do we start putting high speed traction ready? I mean the trains are already up to 100 miles an hour in steam aren't they? So I think we do because we're going catenary anyway. And we're going to want the parallel tracks all the way up here. We do only want two tracks because we're just doing this central line for the minute. We'll come back later on. If we tend to, if we end up having the express line like we want to, we will be coming back anyway to fit that. As a separate entity. Now, I want to be careful of where we're going to put this station. I might build the station out to see him actually. And I was thinking about going for a curve station here. And we sort of emulate the bend in the river a little bit. So we're going to want the four tracks here because we will have separate platforms for the express line to fly through and we want to be heading back up the coast and i think that is the right kind of a direction for us there so we'll go for that and then what we need to do is connect and i'm just wondering whether i actually put catenary on that or not and on the station did we get catenary we did so it does slow down to 99 there but it's still going to um, be just coming out of the station and the, and the centre route here anyway, so that's not too much of an issue. Now, because we've tunnelled, again, it hasn't done the auto uh, parallel track. I don't know why it doesn't do that, but it, it does sort of throw me off sometimes because I'll stick that in now, and then sometimes it'll just see it's done the third track now. It just seems to have a bit of a... it just be a little bit fussy, really, when you're going through a tunnel or, th or for a bridge. So hopefully we can just get rid of this, and it won't it won't mess up these tu this tunnel entrance either. There we go. And how far back did it take? I think we've got it all there. Yes, we have. Okay, brilliant. So for now, what I want to do is carry on this track up, and where we're going to go to next, Shepton. And we already have the station in Shepton, don't we? We do. Okay. I've just realised that Shepton that the track isn't uh, the upgraded high speed track here. So before we do anything, I will just upgrade all of this. 
if you remember, we put this in for the temporary route that we had between Shepton and Rochdale here. But it, it just seemed to be an absolute money sink. I think it's the train didn't really have enough space to get up the speed that it needed or cover the distance it needed to really make us a profit. I think that was the real reason behind it. It was too close. The two towns were too close together for that to be the only route, the, the only two stops for the train line on there, really. There we go. And that, with this map being pretty... Oh, I, well, we got a little bit of a freeze here. I thought we might have lost it then for a second. I thought the game was going to crash. But, oh, and it has put a bridge in. I didn't notice that, so we'll have to come back and get rid of that. But we'll just connect that up. Because this area down by the river is relatively flat, as you can see, we can sort of drag these long distances out with the track, and it doesn't give us anything too too ghastly in terms of what it wants to do with the uh, the, the terrain. Sometimes you can drag something out, and it says it, it looks like it's going to be all right. And it doesn't cost a great deal of money, but then it wants to um, it wants to tunnel and dip and duck, dodge, dip, dive, dive, whatever it is they say on uh, on the dodgeball film. What is it now? Duck, uh, duck, dodge, dip, dive, dive something. <laughs> I don't know, I can't think of it, but I know it's a real tongue twister. But coming along the coast here, I don't mind this little bit of a rise just across the front here, because that's almost acting as a, a sort of water barrier as well for the river. But it comes down here, it cuts through a slight bit of a hill here. But as you can see, all the way up, it's not, there's no like real aggressive curves or anything like that. We will have to go through into this station and upgrade the track inside here. To, or can we do it from here? We we may be able to do it from inside here. Tram track, electric we want, yes. Standard track, track, high speed, there we go. There we go, and we've got the catenary on, perfect. So that Zill's already connected all the way up to Rochdale. We are going to have to go back and put signals on, but that shouldn't take a second. Looks like we're unlocking... Some new trains in London North East and Fowler 2 LP, 55 miles per hour. See, these ones now at 55 miles per hour. I don't think we're going to get around to using those. The Class B17 reversed. Okay, that's something we could possibly have a look at. But what we're all going to have to do is disconnect this. And I'm actually going to delete this depot here. Because I think we're probably best placed changing that now for somewhere different. And I'm going to delete this lot for now as well. I want to pull the lines straight out of the town. And actually, where are we going to have the station? I think we're just going to pop it on the edge of Dunwich here, so we've got a straight run through. It doesn't really seem to any reason. If we're going to have bus stops running through the residentials this side, so in an ideal world, we would keep it away from that side. So I'm going to aim for this side of town. But there is a real slope there, isn't there, actually? So what we, might, what we may do is head out here and follow the river around, and then come back around to the back end of Dunwich. I think that's the play. So we want catenary on here. We want parallel tracks, but I don't think it's going to put parallel tracks in. I do want to just delete those roads just to make it do it nice and smooth if possible. Is it going to double track it for us? No, it's not. Okay. Right, okay. So now what I want to do just drag another one of those out. We don't want parallel tracks, but we do want catenary. There we go, we've got the catenary. I thought for a moment it didn't put catenary on there. And it's given us a nice flat junction here. It's already it's already popped on the, um, the crossing for us. Which is decent. So we'll have a look now at getting that all the way around, all the way up to the top now. We just sort of float around the edge here. We'll put parallel tracks on now. We want the two, we want them as catenary. It should do it now because there's no uh, grievous connections. There's nothing that's going through a bridge or a tunnel or anything like that. Maybe we get this station in first here. So this is going to be another end of the line, isn't it? And we're going to want two tracks. Really, it could just be a normal terminus platform, this one. We need 240 to be keeping up with what we have been doing so far. Let's have a look here. Right, so we want... If, ideally, I'd like to come off the end of this road here, if possible. So we can connect in there. But I think I'd rather make it just a little bit nicer, if possible. Make that nice and flat. 
and then we can connect to here and it'll give us enough room to have a a bus a sort of a bus station on the end here is what I'm thinking of. If it works out that way, it'll be fantastic, but you never know, do you? So this is quite a bend coming round here, but again, 95 miles an hour coming into the station is going to be absolutely fine for us. That'll be connected in. I'll just put down a little bus stop now. Of course, we need to be in roads for that. Uh, what kind of bus stop should we go for at this end? There's not really any reason why to not just use one of these original ones, is there here? I don't see any reason why we wouldn't do that. I wonder if we can get this close enough so it automatically connects. So we could get one of the, uh, the connections straight from the passenger station. That would be quite good, actually, if this could connect. But it doesn't. No, that's no drama, though. People will just have to walk around there. And then we'll need some bus stops. And we'll go for these little red ones just around the town. And we will just do uh, the usual clockwise and counterclockwise around the town here. I've just put an extra one down by mistake, so we'll get rid of that one before I forget. Otherwise, when I'm putting the line in, I'm, I'm more than likely to just select the wrong one. We'll go here and here, here and here, and then I want to connect up this road here. We'll, go, we'll put a bit of a curve in that so it looks a little bit nicer. And then we're back around. Maybe we put an extra two just here to bring that in. And we'll upgrade that road. Is there any other roads that need upgrading? I think whilst we're here, we might as well help the town grow a little bit. There we go. So we haven't got the trains on yet, but if we get this infrastructure in for the roads first, it should help drive those people straight to the station as soon as that's up and running. So I'll stick the road depot out of the side here. And we're going to need two separate lines. So passenger-wise, we have unlocked these new, well, a couple of new vehicles now, actually. Uh, I think we're going to go for this Renault K30. It has only got a capacity of 7, but we're up to 30 miles an hour now. I'm thinking if we can put three of these on each one of the two lines, we'll, put, we'll do the lines as we create them like this. So the first one, we'll go around the city and we'll do that the clockwise, uh, counterclockwise route. So of course we're going to want RP for road passenger. And it's done which... And it's, uh, it's the bus, and it's counterclockwise. And then we'll change a the colour there just so, to something we'll be able to see. There we go. Perfect. So those guys are now on that line already. And then we want another three of those buses and another new line. We want to go from this train station clockwise around Dunwich. And that is going to be RP again. And it's Dunwich bus clockwise. And then we'll change the colour again. Probably to a green. There we go. So that'll get that bedded in. We've already got the bus service in around Rochdale. We've already got a bus service in Shepton. Just want to check sure that, check and make sure sorry that that is connected. It is. From there, we need to come down and we need to sort out what's going to happen at Seaham here. So this is going to give us the opportunity to completely design this area. So what I want to do is outside the station here, I want to be cl just close enough to get that connection, like so. I want this to be nice and flat across the front of the station at least. And then off this way, there we go. And then we can curve up to the existing street system there. And then at the end of here, we could have something that comes down. And as long as that's not too much of a slope, that is a little bit too much of a slope for my liking. So we'll bring it back to that junction. We'll go nice and straight. And we'll go straight down to the, the entrance to the station there. And then at the other side here, I'm going to take this around and connect into here. But what I'm actually going to do is delete that one back. We are going to connect to that. I just want a little bit of a smoother run down. There we go. That's much smoother all the way down. And then that will enable us then to have a nicer station down here. And this is one of, probably one of the ones that later on what I'll want to do is get this. Um, if you've seen the... Um, What's the other series? With the only tram series, you know the double decked bus station. That's the one that I would like to see here, and probably or or maybe even may, maybe even just down at the airport end actually. So I don't want to use this quite there because the terrain's a bit um, too aggressive. But if I can pull that down and then smooth it, 
it did go down quite a bit that then I think I may have had the brush on a little bit stronger than I would have liked and we'll go for a long connection uh, sorry a long platform here just to give it enough room for everybody to be standing and waiting for the buses and then we're going to need again the stops in and around the town aren't they? now it's not one of the main towns this but it's not small either actually um, which one do you use? We don't want a rural stop, I don't think. Or some tram stop. Let's try the... Can we put these on the sides of the road? We can. Okay, so we're going to be coming up this main road here. So we'll put one here. And then I want to come up and we want to connect this street straight across. And then we're going to have a stop here and here. And then we're going to come down the end here. Go here and here. And then we'll be on our way down to there. And I think that covers the whole town. It does. That covers absolutely everything. Perfect. So we are going to need another road depot here, though. So we'll connect one up to the town. And we'll put it towards the outskirts up here. That seems fine. And again, we'll have the two routes. Do we go for Renault buses here again, or do we do these Berlay Scabos French ones? Let's go for the French ones here, just to, so we've got some variety running around. So again, we'll go for the counterclockwise first. So we want um, RP for road passengers, and we want Seaham. And this is the bus, and we've done the counterclockwise first, as always. I'm not sure why, but I always seem to naturally go straight for the counterclockwise route. It seems the most natural one for me to be doing. Not quite sure why, but... And we'll go see him, halt, and around the town that way. And this one is going to be RP see him bus again. And it is the clockwise this time. There we go. So that'll get time to get bedded in now before trains hit the line. We're already covered at this end. So let's just double check on these aircraft here. So we've got 83 people waiting down here now. Which one's Aircraft 1? So Aircraft 1 is only just left as well. I think the problem we're having here is they're not spaced out great either. Um, I have been trying to play with this uh, timetables mod here. But I can't seem to get it to work. I keep putting, and correct me if I'm wrong here guys, but I keep telling it to unbunch. And I've set it to 10 minutes here. And I've set that at, uh, it was at both airfields. One's automatically changed to 9 there. And then one bunch of time here is 10 minutes. And I'm not sure. I thought that would say just 10 minutes between the two. But the aircraft are still just following each other out of the airfield. So I need to do a little bit of extra research and see how that works. It is on me that I just... Since I downloaded this timetable mod, I only got it when I started this series. And I haven't really had any lines that have been busy enough to need it yet. It does look like we've got a lot of passengers on this main line now. 346, 346. 347 at Gorleston. I think I think what we do need is more trains on on the line here, isn't it? The British and Amersham line. Right? Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that one either. That's only got 16 though. But we do need another train here. How much would it be if we could, or can we afford to just clone? I don't want to clone all of them. But if we train uh, clone train two, there we go. Hopefully, I don't regret that, and I'm not sure where that train's going to come out from. Where's that one going to come from now? That's going to come from down here, isn't it? By Gradlington, of course. And that's come out as train number one. Straight into Bradlington and straight into service. All straight away. I think what we may need to be doing now, guys, is actually looking at editing these guys and just adding an extra carriage to each one as well. Oof, you can see the account's just flown down there, though. Something's just cost us a lot of money there. <laughs> I don't know what it was at the end there, but... Something cost us a hell of a lot of money towards the end there. I didn't accidentally buy another one, did I? No. I'm not sure what just came out of the uh, finances there, but it must be the running costs. But it was a hell of a lot of money at the end there. Yeah, I can't really see what came out there. Tracks infrastructure. No. But now we need to have, an, have a good think about what we're going to do in terms of this line. So we'll set the line up first. And what we want this to do, just to make sure, because in the last episode I made a mistake and missed one. I want to make sure I don't miss any connections here. So in Burton, we want to start, and then we want to go up to Seaham. 
We want to be traveling on the left. That's absolutely perfect. I'll make sure it's using the left down here. It is perfect. So C him for three. And we want to Shepton Mallet. Platform three again. We want to go into Rochdale. Just using platform two there, which works. And then we want to go all the way up. And now what I do need to do actually is put that crossover in up here. So just as we leave, I'll just put a really slow crossover. It doesn't need to be both ways at the minute, this, but it will just future-proof us a little bit. There we go, that's coming back. And I've just realised that we haven't put signals on yet. So we'll do this. It looks like we're in with the British signals now. You'll see this mod's pretty good, but you, what we need to do is build all the gantries and things. And we could actually start putting these on yet. I think it might still be a little bit too early for these. 1920s, would they have had all of this? You know what, let's do it. It future-proofs it for us, and it makes it look uh, a lot more interesting, doesn't it? So, We'll stick one here just before that station. And then going back down this way, then we'll tell it to auto-sig. 500 meter intervals, that's fine. And as soon as we've cleared out, that should put us 500 meter intervals on, which it has. And then leaving the station, we'll put one there so these hopefully match each other, which they have all the way. That's brilliant. We've already got the signals in the middle here, which will be the older kind of signals, actually, won't they? We'll put one leaving the station here so we get the 500 meter spacing. There we go, all the way down. We'll leave one. Actually, this one will be fine because the stations themselves do act as a signal. We can put one here to match the signals again. And then leaving the station once more, we'll have one there. And then we'll have one here and then I do want to get an extra one we don't want auto sig I do want one extra just before we go into the station don't I we need to put a crossover in here as well it's actually behaved itself quite well there I think All right, so now what I want to do is check this line is right still so we want to be heading all the way up on the left and down on the right we got all the way up to Dunwich, so we'll go. We'll head up there and then follow it back down. At Dunwich, we are using correct platform actually, yeah. And we want to come back down through Rochdale again. And we want to stop on the left-hand side again, and then at Shepton, we want to stop again. Ah, so it did it wrong at Shepton. That's so at Shepton. We want to go for platform two. There we go, and then back down to Seaham. Seaham's done it correctly. Perfect. So this now is going to be TP for train passenger. And for our map at least, this is the East Coast main line. There we go. So, that we're, so now we have the East Coast main line, which means we can also rename the main line over here. It's the West Coast main line. And that'll help us in the comments and things now to identify. If you guys are giving me some advice on something, you'll be able to say, well, it's on the East Coast Main Line. And, and then it'll help me locate things a lot better, I think. So we've got that there. I'm happy with the route. We've got buses on everywhere. I'm just worried about this because this last train up here, we can get rid of that route now, actually, can't we? We don't need that one anymore. But the last time I put a train on this side of the river, it didn't work at all. But I do think that was just because... It was just too short, but now people are going to want to come all the way down to get on an aircraft and go. And then this is where I have to think about whether we still need these ships or not. There's actually 200 people waiting for the ship there. 78 there. There's only 20 on it. 45 down here, so I don't think we need more ships. Unless we've unlocked anything a lot better yet. Which it doesn't look like we have, actually. No, we're still, we're still on front and act. So yeah, no issues. People will definitely want to get this train down then. So now we need to decide where we're going to put the depot. And I've not really got anything against having it just up at the end, but, but I suppose in the middle is probably about the right idea. If we go somewhere around here, eventually I'd like to make some kind of uh, big deal of this and have a nice sort of freight yard looking area. But... I'll be honest with you guys, you know, I'm not I'm not great at the design side of things and I don't have a lot of mods that enable me to do it. 
it is something that I do want to get better at though. So in the future, I will be working on trying to make myself better at it. Um, and I'd like it to work, but it's just something that doesn't come naturally to me, I suppose. But I'm going to cross that over there. And then I'm going to put that as a double slip. That'll enable the trains to get on that way. I don't think this one needs to be double slip. Uh, I suppose someone might want to come back into the depot from this side. But what I will do is just add some signals. And we'll put signals from here. We don't want one way. Because I want to allow the trains to come both ways if they need to. I don't want one way. Did I select yes then when I didn't mean to? <laughs> On here, one way. Oh, I did select yes. Okay, I didn't mean to. So now hopefully, well, I want to sort this road out. Sorry guys, you probably don't want to be seeing all the, this road connection bit, but it, I know it'll really bug me if I just leave it. No, that's, that's too much, isn't it? Uh, maybe we just have a nice connection. Have we got a flat area here where we can do a connection? Is that not ruining the road? No, it's not. We can have some nice gates there. Uh, or actually, well, I think we'll just go for post because we are out in the middle of the countryside. Do we re would we really need to have that extra bit? Or would we really need to have a gate there? Do you know what I mean? Oh, well, that's fine with the barrier. That, that'll do me. And then we'll come back here and connect this in. Or actually, we'll pull this back just so it looks a bit more as if it already existed and we haven't just steamed through here. And I have noticed we are now up to this tarmac road. So we are going to have to go around and upgrade all those roads. I'm not going to do it just for now, but it does look a bit strange. Now we've got some, some asphalt road and some not. Now we need to decide what we're going to have on this route. We do have electrics now, don't we? We do. But they do only go at 68 miles an hour. So maybe maybe this is a, a good chance to bring in something a little bit quicker. Have we got anything yet around the 100 miles an hour mark? I know, I think it's around now, is it? Where we've got the A35 it is. So that's 62. So that's what we'd have in the base game at the minute, 62. So as long as we're going above 62, we can work with that. Oh, the, the Atlantic. The large Atlantic. Well, Greyhounds we're already using, aren't we, on the other side? Blind Scotsman. It's a million pounds a year, though. Do we just go? Do we go for two flying Scotsmans? Do we go for two flying Scotsmans? I'm go, I'm doing it, guys. We're going to go for a flying. We're going to go for two trains, flying Scotsmans. So 75 is the top speed here. So we need something that can do 75. LMS period three early maroon livery, semi-fictional LMS carriage and maroon with black and gold lining. I think we have a look at what that can do. 260,000 annual cost though these are expensive and the, the train can only do 75 so really we should have these on I think I'm going to have to stick to these guys just for money I don't want to absolutely tank the series and break it for us so we'll go for the generic bogey here the generic British carriage it carries 18 and goes at 75 miles per hour I think that's the play here so I think we go for one of those first class we go for a few third class. Power's still good, and then we'll stick a rear brake on the end as well. That takes us to mediocre. So we'll get rid of one of the third class. We've got a capacity of 90. We want two of those trains. It's going to be 25 million. I'll tell you what, I'll buy one, and then I'll get a loan for another one. Ah, I forgot this. Stevens Price, if you hold shift and click, it gives you 5 million installments on the loan. Thanks again for that, Stephen. Right, there we go, we're on. And then I'm going to pay back this loan. We've still got 11 million outstanding, though. And then let's have a look at this Flying Scotsman. It is just such an iconic train, isn't it? The A3 Flying Scotsman. Love how it says over the, the, the arch there. I'm not sure if you can make it out in the video, but in the brass work there, it says the Flying Highlander. Such an iconic, cool-looking train. 
can't wait until the time when we've actually got you know H, uh, TGVs and things running up and down here, maybe some dual stocks, things like that. Because the, the plan is, if you can see in this station here in Shepton, this central line that we've currently got hooked up will remain as sort of the constantly stopping train, the regional. It'll stop at every stop. But then what we are going to have is one main line from Dunwich, or an express train, sorry, from Dunwich, or maybe starting in Rochdale. I'm not sure where it's going to start yet. But it's going to start at one of these two stations and just go straight down to the airport and not stop at anywhere in between. So people can choose then which one they want to get on. And then I think the plan for this Howden, Gillingham, Bradford, Bradford on Avon is I think I think what I want to do is have a local local link just between these three, and then just from one of them down to the down into one of the towns that's got the main line. So it, it may be these three on one line, and then just one separate line that goes to Dunwich. Or at that point, we might as well have the one line that goes from Bradford all the way up to Dunwich. This looks like it's probably too hilly at the back. I was thinking we could just run another line all the way up and create a sort of a loop here, but. That sort of takes away the idea of the main line, doesn't it? I like the idea of a couple of local branches. Or maybe we go Bradford Bradford to Gillingham, round to Shepton Mallet like this. And then Howden just links into Dunwich. And then Newbiggin hooks in down to Burton by the air, airfield. I think that'll be good. Because that is now everything this side of the map's hooked up. And once we've hooked them guys, we've got everything. And it's all about just seeing what's going to come with time then. And how quickly we're going to get things... Uh, moving on and uh, one thing I was looking at is to whether just to make sure that the game isn't going to start crashing is to have a look at that add on the um, realistic passengers mod let me know if you've used that guys at all because it's one I'm looking at because as you can see this train now can carry 90 but it's it's probably more likely in real life without with this many carriages it could probably carry almost 200 people so it just gives a more re realistic capacity it does I believe just give you the money for everyone though so it would just mean money would no longer be an issue so I've been sort of holding off until we get to the point which you always do eventually in Transport Fever where money is no longer an issue and every line you have is just printing money so I'm sort of waiting until we get to that point now I thought we were using the other platform here because I like the idea of running down the left and straight into the station so when this guy leaves I'm going to set this to platform 2 or has it just been told that it can use anything? I'm not really sure this the platform thing works yet, you know. There we go. Well, that's what I want it to do. And I just want to make sure now that up at Dunwich it hasn't moved. It hasn't. So you can see in Dunwich we'll be coming in full steam ahead. Straight into that left-hand platform. And that's what I was after. So, hopefully guys, you've enjoyed this episode again. That is where we're going to leave it for this one. I'm going to wait for the the first flying scotsman's come out of the tunnel here and we can have a little bit of a ride on in between episodes i do need to do a lot of de-weeding now you know steven spry won't be happy with me you can see all the way along here the ballast needs painting in um let me know if you guys would like a ride along video on any of these lines i don't mind doing that you know i can sort of set it, set the train off and and leave it running whilst i'm editing and we can watch the whole line go from end to end I'd probably just put some music over the top and it could be something that you guys are on in the background when you're playing or something like that if you're into that kind of thing let me know and I can do it as a little ad hoc video that's not a problem but yeah thanks as always for joining me guys uh, I appreciate it make sure you drop me some feedback down in the comments let me know if you've liked it hit the subscribe button if you haven't, if you haven't already we're almost at that thousand more it seems like we've sort of stalled to be honest around the 900 more I think at the minute we're currently sitting at about 930 as I'm recording this but we've been at around between 900 and 930 now it keeps bouncing up and down and has been for about two weeks now which is the first time to be honest with you it's been really stagnant and I've just noticed that this side of the track hasn't got catenary for some reason so I'll get that upgraded in between episodes as well but there you go guys we'll leave it there with this magnificent view down the side of the river with the flying Scotsman I hope you all have a, a great bank holiday weekend as it is for me here now by the time you watch this that'll be over and done with I believe but whatever you're doing this weekend guys have a good one and I will catch you in the next video.